Ask any video editor what the most used transition effect in their arsenal of effects is, and they'll probably say the dissolve. Besides the direct cut, the dissolve is a staple in the book of film and video editing. To use the dissolve transition in today's editing packages, I simply go to my effects library, find dissolve, and drag it over to my timeline. But wait! Digital editing wasn't always available. How did editors perform a dissolve, or what is also called a crossfade, before digital editing was available? Well, back in the day, it was a pretty convoluted process. Now, what exactly is a dissolve? Well, it's a gradual transition of one image to another. In the case of film, it's gradually transitioning from one series of images to another series of images. Now, conventional fades and dissolves usually run from about 24 to 48 frames. However, they may be shortened or extended to whatever length pleases the director and the editor. A very short dissolve, lasting about 6 to 12 frames, called soft cuts, are used to hide breaks in action and avoid jump cuts. For example, a soft cut might be used in nature videos where there's a long break in action. Alternatively, some directors use very long dissolves, like really long dissolves, like the George Stevens movie, A Place in the Sun. If I wanted to do this now, I would simply click the dissolve effect and enter the number of frames I wanted to take place. But to do this in the days before digital editing, an editor would employ the use of a device called an optical printer. You've probably seen optical printers in action in movies like Star Wars. Industrial Light and Magic pushed optical effects to the limits and made very heavy use of optical printers. But the technology dates as far back as the 1930s. Think of the optical printer as a film, playback, and recording all in one machine. It's capable of playing two reels of film at once and then projecting that composite onto a negative for recording. Let's look at how an optical printing process would have handled a typical dissolve. For this example, we will use a couple of images from my two favorite movies, Blazing Saddles from 1974 and Black Dynamite from 2009. The editor would collect the two shots to be dissolved, the outgoing scene, the one we're cutting from, and the incoming scene, the one we're cutting to. She would then create a worksheet with the details of where the start and end frames of the effect should be and send them to the lab for the optical print. A dissolve is made by double printing a fade out of the outgoing scene with a fade in of the incoming scene. The lab tech would first load the master positive of the outgoing shot into the printer. This is then run and copied onto the negative. As it's copied, the camera shutter is gradually closed the number of predetermined frames per the editor's worksheet instructions until it is fully closed. The first patch, which is essentially a fade out, is recorded. The negative is then rewound to the dissolved start mark. Now with the shutter still fully closed, the outgoing shot is then replaced with the incoming shot. The projector is started again, this time the shutter slowly opens frame by frame and records a fade in onto the same negative. Once the shutter is fully opened, the recording stops and the negative now contains the final dissolve effect. Obviously this workflow presented its own set of challenges. The editors couldn't see what the transition looked like until all the work was done and it came back from the lab. It also ate up more film as every pass in the optical printer required fresh film and every trip to the optical print lab cost money. There was a set charge for each effect, as well as a running footage fee. Now, some producers tried to save money by ordering only the exact footage of the dissolve plus three or four frames on each side for splicing. So they would direct the negative cutter to splice the negative of the effect with the original negatives of the incoming and outgoing shots. Basically, they were trying to get cheap on it. This turned out to be more trouble than it's worth, as the unavoidable differences in film grain, remember, we're still talking about real film, not digital. Film grain, contrast, and resolution between the original dissolve effect negatives and the actual footage used on set are often apparent on the screen and it causes the footage to like pop in and out. 
So it's usually better to pay the extra footage fees and have the entire incoming and outgoing shot processed. You can see what a huge difference the move to digital made on the creation of film and video. So be thankful the next time you want to dissolve that you can just have it as simply as that. Thanks for watching this rack focus on the dissolve effect. Click that guy right there if you want to see our latest video. Click that guy if you want to see a related video. And click that guy right there to subscribe and see videos every week. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.